Hi guys, my name is Sandy. I'm a homeschooling mom to two boys. I have a third grader and a fifth grader. And um, since we switched up our science a little bit and I have a new curriculum for master books that I wanted to really review before, before I forgot about it while it was fresh in my mind. And so I'm gonna kind of give like a, a middle of the year update on what we're doing for science. All right, so just to go over this really quick, this is what we had used at the beginning of the school year. I had done a previous video where I reviewed it and you know went into detail about it. And I had picked this up from Amazon and we finished this in December. It's got like unit studies. A few of these units we skipped completely because I'd already taught my boys that in previous years. And you can really drag this out an entire year if you do some supplementing. But I really just, I didn't supplement enough and we skipped a few units. We finished it in December. And then after that, um, I picked up a elementary curriculum from Master Books. So this is called Science Starters and it's by Master Books. This is a unit study for grades three to six and each unit is supposed to take half of a school year. And so I picked up Forces in Motion, Matter, and Energy. And for each one I have the regular textbook and then I've also got the student journal. And you don't need the student journal to teach it. Everything that you need is in the regular textbook. But I'm glad I got the student journal because it's really helpful to have. And it's like $5 more maybe, so it's really, really cheap to get an entire like lab workbook. Um, we started this probably the middle of December and we just finished it this week. And I mean by finish is I'm not going to be using it anymore. So when I first ordered this, I got a really good price on eBay and I was really excited to get it. It looked colorful and exciting for kids and it has a lot of hands-on activities. And I started flipping through the books and they, they do look bright and colorful. It's very simple for a parent to read to the child. There's a lot of activities. And just to flip through the regular textbook, Here's the table of contents with everything that it covers. You can see there's a lot of investigation. So every single lesson has an investigation and the science experiment to go with it. And here's just the first one. You start off by reading a little bit and then doing the science experiments. And each science experiment has a list of what you need. And it has pictures of everything that you're gonna use, which is really awesome and it's very helpful. And it gives like a little ending to the experiments. There's always a dig deeper section if you want to do more research on your own. And then a real life example. And that's the, the lesson. Um, the next investigation two gives a little introduction. And then it gives you what you need for the science experiment. There's a list on the side. And what you have to do. And then this one kind of gives an ending and it has Darwin. And the reason that we stopped using it after about a month, well, the first issue was when I first ordered it, um, I was flipping through it and I realized a lot of these materials are not easy to get. And I was a little bit overwhelmed. I think it's awesome that they list all the materials and they have a picture of everything, which really helped. But I was just overwhelmed with how to collect everything. And I could not find a kit that you can buy online anywhere to try to help. And so in this book, I've kind of marked like all the science experiments that it was way too difficult to get and or expensive. And I was just, I was planning on just skipping those experiments and keep going with the whole curriculum. But then when I went through, I was like, there's a lot of experiments I'm going to be skipping. Like my idea was to just read the introduction, do like educational video in the place of the experiments. And then I was going to just move on from that, but as I started going, I realized that the experiment is like the bulk of the lesson. And if you skip the actual experiment, your kids are not really gonna understand what they're supposed to be learning. Like it's gonna go way over their head and they're not gonna remember it. Because as you can see, there's really not a whole lot that you read on everything. 
Oh, and this was actually our favorite experiment right here. It's a teacher demonstration where the can collapses when you put it in cold water. And it worked for us. And it was really awesome and a lot of fun. And the experiments over here, everything was pretty easy to gather. We did all of these they, for like five or ten minutes apiece. And the kids had a lot of fun with it. But let me flip through some of these that we ended up skipping. Like this one we ended up skipping. It's got a wagon. We don't own a wagon. I wasn't about to buy one. Um, this one, it has the styrofoam balls. I wasn't about to go out and get a pack of them just for that, so I was going to skip that. This one's got a skateboard. We don't own a skateboard. Um, this one, you could probably buy some of this at a hardware store. Like, it's got the clamp. You can probably find these at a hardware store. I just, I didn't want to spend the money on that and then make a, a trip to the store just for this. Uh, roller skates. We don't own roller skates. That's another thing I was not going to buy. This one, these are probably items you can find at a hardware store in this one too. But it's just going to add up if you make all these trips to the hardware store. Here's another one. And then I was flipping through over here and there's a bunch of stuff in this also the same thing where I have to find myself skipping so many experiments and I was worried my children were not going to learn right. Like this one in particular, you've got iron fillings, which I looked online, iron fillings are pretty expensive. And before I started any of the lessons, I did notice that this right here, the spring scale was used quite a bit in this Forces in Motion book. And the spring scale, I found at Rainbow Resources for under $5. So that was like one of the good things out of this that I was able to find on my own for pretty cheap. And this gets used a lot. It gets used in like maybe five experiments in the Forces in Motion book. And let me show you guys really quick the student journal, which I was happy to have. It's really cheap just to add this on, and it gives the kids a place to put down their thoughts after you do an experiment. This one is the first one. It includes a chart, which you really need for the ex experiment, but also the book has a chart. So you can teach just from the book. Find that one. This one has a chart too, but you can tell it's got the robot in it. And it's a little bit harder to use for your kids to put down their observations. See, this one's a little bit easier for a child. And then it's got a lot of questions in here. These questions right here on this page. Those questions are all in the book. What did you learn questions in the textbook? But as you can tell over here, there's a nice spot for the kids to put their answers in. This is the second investigation that we did. And we were unable to do the experiment because we don't have a wagon. So in this case, I just read on and I read on to the story of Darwin and his tree of life and evolution. I felt like this whole lesson just wasn't flowing very smoothly. Like the first part of the lesson I felt like was completely different than this part in Darwin. I almost felt like Darwin was just thrown in there randomly. And we had never studied Darwin before, so my kids had really trouble making a connection between the two of these. I felt like because we were in, unable to do the science activity, really the whole lesson was almost a waste because my kids didn't get the whole scope of what was going on. And I love all the pictures in here. It's plenty to keep your kids excited when you're reading through it. So I'm going to flip through a few of the other books. This is the textbook for Matter. There's the table of contents. You can tell each lesson has an investigation to go with it, which is really, really cool if your kids like hands-on, and my kids do like hands-on. But, you know, after starting it, using it for the first month, I felt like it was way too much for me to put together. So I almost feel like it would have been nice to have a little bit more reading and a little bit less activity. So here's the first investigation. And you can tell there's really not much of an introduction before you jump in and do it. You can see the investigation and the science ex experiments pretty much the bulk of the whole lesson. So skipping a lot of them was going to cause problems. And here's a real life connection. And there is a teacher 
books. You can also buy a teacher textbook, and I did not get that. It has the tests and quizzes in it. It has a weekly schedule that you can follow. And I don't give my kids tests right now in science. Maybe when they get older to like the high school level, I'll start testing them. But right now, I just, you know, ask them questions as we're going through a lesson. Just to make sure that they're following along and listening and understanding it. And this is the last book. There's another scientist that it talks about. So that was the master books, elementary science, that we're not going to be continuing with. Um, what we are going to be using the rest of the year, I'm going to try out the BGU science. And once we start using it towards the end of the year, I'm going to write a review on the full thing. But I mainly picked the BGU because they do have science kits that you can buy online. And when I was looking through the sample of the textbook, I really, really like all the pictures in there. There's a lot of real life photographs, a lot of um, easy to understand like color diagrams in here for children. And um, after I got it and I was reading through the textbooks, I realized that this is really written for kids. Like the, the level three or third grade is really towards like a third grader. So like the whole textbook is easy for a third grader to understand. And when I look through the fifth grade, this is the teacher manual or the teacher textbook. Um, it looks like it's written for a fifth grader to understand. So it's not going to go over your child's head. I had never really considered BJU or Bob Jones science in the past. Um, mainly because the high price tag always scared me off. And also, it's leveled for each grade. And I was a little worried my kids are two grades apart. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go through the third grade this year. Since I've got a third grader and a fifth grader, I'm just going to teach them together. And then I'm um, looking at the fourth grade book. We already covered those topics. So next year, I'm going to skip the fourth grade. And I plan on moving them into the fifth grade. So since my kids are going to be in fourth and sixth grade next year, I think just teaching them in the middle grade in between them will work out really well. You can see with the teacher textbook, you've got the actual student textbook here, and then you've got notes of how extra activities or like little extra pieces of information that you can tell your kids as you're doing it. So um, what we're going to be using with it is I picked this up from Evan Moore. It's a giant science resource book, grades one to six. My kids are right now, um, they're in third and fifth grade, and next year they're going to be in fourth and sixth grade. Um, I'll be able to use it next year too, because it goes up to sixth grade. And a lot of the um, a lot of the workbook pages in here, you can tell it's more for first graders. They're just coloring pages, but there's a lot of stuff that you can definitely use as sixth graders. So whenever we do a unit in here, I'm going to be matching up worksheets with it. Maybe I'll match up some educational videos. And here's just a quick look at it. There's the index of everything that includes. And I'm just going to flip through it really quick. So I like this because it looks like there's a lot of straightforward workbook pages for the children. So this is the third edition. When I compared the third and fourth edition, from what I could tell online, it looks like it didn't really change too much. And I just wanted to really quickly mention the CD in the back. Um, whenever I researched this, I was really curious to see what was on the CD. And um, there wasn't really anything I'm going to be using. I put it in my computer. I was excited. There wasn't really any... Um, educational videos or anything too useful on there for me. There was the testing and the answers for the tests and the quizzes on here. I don't test my kids, so I'm not going to be using that. But the plan is to, if we like this, we're going to be using the five next year. and I'm probably going to get the science kit with it. And then we're going to just continue from there. We're going to use the sixth grade and seventh grade. And I'll just keep my kids, since they're so close in age, I'm just going to keep on teaching them together. So that's it for my video. I hope it was helpful. Bye!